be a good person and put bacon on your family's clam chowder, okay? Hello and welcome to Badash Outdoors. On my last video, I went razor clam digging on the Washington coast. The ocean treated us well, everyone joined in on the fun. If you missed out on part one, be sure to watch that video next and subscribe to catch more of my Badash adventures. This is what dreams are made of. With cleaned clams, it's time for us to make something delicious. Razor clam chowder. Let's get into it. Here's what you need. Clam juice, clams, heavy cream, salt and pepper, garlic powder, bay leaves, rosemary, dill, red potatoes, butter, shallot, flour, onion, bacon. All of the ingredients are listed in the description of this video. The first thing I'm gonna do is grab a big pot and I'm gonna fry up about four pieces of the peppered bacon. I have my onion and shallot in a food processor and I saute the vegetables in bacon grease in my pot. I add my butter, then I add my celery. I continue to saute for four minutes. I'm gonna add in the two bottles of clam juice. And I'm gonna bring that to a simmer. Once it's simmering, I'm gonna go ahead and add in all of my herbs. Now that we're at a pretty good simmer, it's time to go ahead and add the herbs in. So I have a teaspoon of dill I'm adding in teaspoon of rosemary that I'm adding in, three bay leaves that I'm adding in, and about two teaspoons of garlic powder. I'm gonna let this simmer for just another moment and then I'm gonna go ahead and add in a little bit of flour and then, um, and then it'll be time for the potatoes, the cream and the clams. My clam chowder is already thickening up, which is great. So I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle a little bit of this flour in. I have about an eighth of a cup. And if you don't use all of it, that's totally fine. Usually I just sprinkle a little bit, give a little bit of a mix and kind of assess how thick my clam chowder is. Even though I use a similar recipe every single time, it always turns out just a tad bit different. So it's good to be able to improvise as you need to. So this is simmering, my herbs are in. The next step is to add the cream. So I'm going to add that in. Fantastic, and now I'm gonna add my three red potatoes in. And I have them all chopped up into just a bit smaller than one inch pieces. Actually, they're like half inch pieces. My potatoes in. So, the trick to amazing clam chowder is to not overcook the actual clams themselves. So when I put the potatoes in, usually it takes about 20 minutes for those to cook and soften. So I'm gonna wait for about 10 minutes and then I'm going to add in the clams for the last 10 minutes. Sometimes even like five to seven is, is quite enough. Okay, it's been about 12 minutes and I checked the I check the potatoes by pulling them to the side with my spatula and trying to squish them against the side of the pot. So they aren't squishing very easily, but they're starting to give now. So to me, that means the potatoes are gonna be done in the next like five to seven minutes. So this is a perfect time to go ahead and add my razor clams. So I have the razor clams here. I put them in a processor and chopped them down to pretty small size and I'm just gonna add them all right on into the pot. I'm gonna stir these in until they're well distributed and I'm gonna let them simmer on kind of lower heat. I'm gonna turn the heat down 
On my oven, this is um, like medium low heat. So on a scale of one to 10, I have mine set on four right now. So I think this is about done, but I wanna taste it one more time before I pull it off the burner, cool it down and start serving it. So I have a little taste here and I'm tasting this to see if it needs any salt and pepper or how much of each. Mm. Ugh, it's so good. And then I'm gonna stir it up, pull it off the burner, chop up my bacon, add it on top, and then it's time to eat the clam chowder. Okay, time to garnish and serve. Garnish and serve. Bully bully time. We should probably not be recording any of this for one. So if you love people, you put bacon on their clam chowder. Like this is, this is not disputed. We're good on this. And if you have a maple bar, you put bacon on that too, because that's amazing. And like we, like this is already a known fact. We love bacon on our maple bars. But what if you have a cheesecake? If somebody had a delicious New York style cheesecake and had like bacon bits on top of it, would it be good? I would argue, yes. I can't think of a lot of things that wouldn't be good with bacon. Old fashions with bacon, lay it on me. Bloody Marys with bacon, lay it on me. Sugar cookies with bacon, I'd try it. I'm not scared and I won't, I have no issue admitting that. Any other foods, I bet you, I bet you, it may not be the worst thing. So be a good person and put bacon on your family's clown chatter, okay? I will garnish with some parsley. That's where it's at. It is time for the best part. Mm. This is exactly the sort of thing that I want on a fall, winter, cold afternoon. This is like, clam chowder that you can serve as a side. This is a clam chowder that you could serve as a main course. And the thing is, is like, even if, like I said earlier, when you use the same recipe every, every single time, some will turn out thinner, some will turn out thicker, but some just like, they all turn out just a tad bit different every single time. It just depends on your like ingredients. It depends on your clams, how many clams you have. All of that goes into play. And this one has been one of my favorites in, in quite some time. I'm proud to dig and gather my own food. Yeah, we got it. Oh, nice one. Get it, get it, go, get it go, 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 go. Is there a plan? Yeah, whoa. Proud to cook and share with others. If you love it too, hit the thumbs up, subscribe so you don't miss the badass adventures, and thanks, thanks for being here. And I'll see you on my next adventure. Matt, are you having fun?